Most radios of this type come with some sort of programming software. If you go for a budget variety radio, that programming software it can be a little bit hit and miss. It usually looks like something that was written for Windows 3.1 and doesn't always work. However, when it does, the options that are available to you are usually pretty good. You can even potentially do a lot of stuff that isn't legal, at least in the UK. So possibly, you know, increasing the power of your PMR446 radio from 0.5 of a watt to maybe one watt or two watts or so, those sort of things. When you're dealing with a business radio like this from Motorola, the software that you get is the CPS software and it is, it is, well, you can do a lot with it, but it is, Everything you can do is legal and there are a lot of quite a few things that you might want to do and you just can't. Firstly with a Motorola radio, the first thing you're going to need is one of these which is a CPS programming cable and these retail at about seven, I think this was like 70 pounds or something like that. I mean sure you can do a lot of radios with this, you only need to buy one of these potentially, but um, still it's only a USB cable with a bit of electronics in there presumably. You also get an adapter here because I'm guessing that in the past they had chargers that connected with this. But all you do is you grab that cable and you stick this, you stick it in the back of the uh, charger like that, put your radio on, plug it into the USB socket on your computer and turn it on and launch the software. So let's do that now and let's take a look at the CPS programming software for Motorola. The first thing you notice is that this software is served on a web server. It is served over a browser. It's not an independent piece of software that necessarily needs to be installed on a machine. For some that might seem a little bit over the top, but the fact that this could be served centrally and then you just kind of connect to it with your session time open here at the top could be really useful if you're looking to set up multiple radios from different locations and different computers. It's, I, I'm only going to give you a rough idea here because I'm not knowledgeable enough in this software to give you any massive sort of you know major instructions. But if you are interested, let's take a look at it. Firstly, I'm going to go to, the, in fact, firstly, I'm going to turn my radio on. So I've got it connected via the CPS cable. This is the uh, XT420. And I only have that radio. Of course, if you have a different radio, you probably get more options and different options on this. But if I click on radio now here and I do um, an it uh, should have auto-detected the uh, COM port. I could click on read radio, then you can see here that it starts reading. And, and when it does that, it probably, you could probably heard it heard in the background there, it actually resets the radio as well. First page that comes up gives you information about your radio. And there's lots of stuff you can change on here, some really nice stuff that you can change. This is all the kind of all the different sections you can change, but the very top section here is just your radio information. Then you've got your general settings uh, about the uh, with the radio, you know, what the buttons do and things, various audio settings. And then the all important channel settings. So let's just take a look at these one by one and see what you can do. Um, this is a 16 channel radio, but of course, remember, it's not really. It has 16 channels on it, but it only supports eight frequencies. The other channels are used for different CTCSS codes or whatever, or DCS codes, whichever codes you happen to be using. That's how it's done, and it's a real shame. I was hoping that with this software, you might be able to kind of access additional uh, additional PMR446 frequencies, you know, the, uh, the upper eight, but you can't, so that's that. So as we move down here, under general settings, we can put uh, passwords in here, we can disable the LEDs, and uh, we can various stuff around battery. So you look at the battery save, it says on the right hand side, allows the user to enable or disable battery save mode. Disabling this feature causes the battery life to shorten by about 20%. There's nothing else mentioned. It's like, so why wouldn't you enable this feature? I don't understand why they put stuff like that in. But anyway, <laughs> that's fine, that's enabled. Cloning mode, so if you're, if you're doing um, cloning with other, uh, allowing your radio to be cloned with other radios. Transmit timeout, so it stops you having the button pressed down for too long. 
PL reverse burst frequency, which is why I did I mentioned this on another video. The motor rollers are really good at suppressing the sudden burst of of noise um, when you release the push to talk button, so the other radio doesn't get any noise because as you release it, it sends through this um, tone and it knows it's been released and immediately mutes the other radio, so you don't get any additional kind of noise when you release the button. That's what that's all about, anyway. And then there's a couple of things here. I'm not quite sure what they do. Scan hang time. But you get some nice help up on the right-hand side. So if you want to read that, then I'll just zoom in there now. And you can see for yourself exactly what that does. Audio settings. Well, the great thing, you have options around this. Other walkie-talkies that I've reviewed, I've said, well, they're good in some respects. But the mic quality might be a little... The mic's mic might be a little bit quiet. The X-T420s are particularly bold and brash and loud, and they that's with the microphone gain set to medium. I could, of course, set this to high and make them even louder <laughs> and um, potentially distorted, I suppose. And then you have the microphone gain for a connected accessory, like a um, uh, hand microphone. Uh, vox level, because they do support um, vox on these, uh, these walkie-talkies. And then uh, iVox level, silent mode, power up audio. So you have different things that can be announced when the unit powers up. Mine is currently set, gives me the battery level on the device and which channel it is. And then you have options around just a tone and the channel and silent. So you can turn the radio on and be stealthy. Voice prompt. That means that uh, when you change channel, it's going to tell you what's going on and which language. You can choose quite a few different languages there. Nice. And the volume level of the voice, uh, the voice prompt volume level, this is kind of related to your volume level. So it, I've got it set to minus five because if I have the radio turned up quite high, so I'm able to hear someone from a distance, I don't then want that volume level. If I don't want to adjust that volume level, I want then the voice prompt to be fairly quiet. Otherwise, it really blasts out and is quite annoying. Uh, talk permit tone selects the talk permit tone modes. If talk permit tone is enabled, the radio shall play a special tone at the start of each transmission to indicate when the user may speak. That's off at the moment. Roger beep. You can set a Roger beep on these if you want. Some people like that. And yeah, so there's lots of different things you can change on these. And you can also program in the two side buttons that exist on this particular radio and this is why i say on different radios it's going to be a bit different uh, i've got that set to monitor so that monitor gives me the option to um, essentially open up the squelch and listen to the background noise in case the transmission's really low um, low signal and the other button sends a call tone so that they to me are the best most useful but there aren't millions of them you've got the option to uh, scramble to you know turn on scramble Turn, it, turn off the operation of the button, which I suppose could be good if, you, if they get pressed by accident, and uh, enable the scan as well. Moving down to the RF frequencies, well, they're listed here for each of the channels, and they are fixed. As I say, 1 to 8 is fixed. They are your UK PMR446 or European PMR446 frequencies. And here I can edit each of the channels. That's across two pages. So if I click on here, I get the second set from 9 to 16. So let's just go into one of these and show you what I mean. So you click on Edit More, and this gives you an option to change the name of the channel. And you can use a user customized voice prompt on these. So you can actually import a voice file, import an audio file, for it to read out as your channel name. So although the unit comes with lots of different preset ones, so a predefined voice prompt, if I look at all these, I'll show you what you can set this to. So various different parts of a, a store that you might have, you know, you can preset, rather than it having say, saying channel seven or channel six, it can say warehouse and shop room, and, but you can also set up all your own. And so you can have someone announce it and, and upload that that file. I mean, this is where business radios come into their own. You know, you can really do this stuff that's genuinely useful for people who are working with these day in, day out. That's a really nice feature. I've never tried uploading one, but I think it's a really great feature. I've just got mine set to, the, um, to, to announce the channel. If you put in some text, you can get it to play that back. So you don't actually have to import a voice file. I could just type in here 
a name maybe, so someone's uh, frequency, you know, so you know that person's available on that frequency. I could just type in a name there and it will read that out to you in a very decent voice. It's just voice synthesis, basic voice synthesis. And yeah, you can set scramble on the channel for you set a bit uh, busy lock. That's quite a nice, uh, nice feature. So that if someone um, starts transmitting and the radio is receiving a transmission, you then can't transmit until that transmission has finished. So you don't get kind of multiple people talking on the same channel at the same time. They can be set to receive only or simplex operation. And this each channel can be set to be part of a certain scan list and we'll go on to the scan list in this in a second but the frequencies down the bottom here you do of course only have those eight to select from you could set them all to be on channel eight if you wanted but what would be the point of that the main thing you change here is the code they call them pl codes or dpl codes i call them uh, ctcss frequencies <coughs> and you can enable auto scan so that when you select that particular channel the radio that will then scan the other frequencies in its predetermined scan list which is here scan list one so if i then now just click ok on there and go out to the um, page again you can edit all those channels and then you can edit your scan list so if i selected scan list one I might want to ignore some of the other channels, but I might only want to, you know, the only channels I'm interested in hearing are channel one, channel three, and channel five. That is part of scan list one. So then I can set scan list one on a certain channel and set it to auto scan, and then it will scan all those three channels continuously while my radio is on standby. Sounds a bit complicated the way I describe it there, but I'm sure you know what I mean. That is a useful, really useful feature. It means that you can kind of ignore all those other channels, but keep an eye on multiple channels at one time. And then you've got some stuff down the bottom here, customized PL codes. You can edit the actual PL codes that Motorola kind of use. They use PL code kind of 124 and stuff, so you can change the frequency that is allocated to certain PL codes on the Motorola side. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can, so. Yeah, I'm not quite sure the benefits of that. Someone else may, with, with more knowledge than me may be able to tell you about that. So it's simple enough. You make all your changes and write to radio. Job done. And that's it. I mean, the software is nice. It's reliable. And um, it's still, I mean, sure, it looks a bit dated, but it's not as dated as some of the stuff I've seen from other manufacturers. This uh, is nice and... It, while it doesn't let you change things like power and those sort of things and, and and tweak the frequency to absolutely anything, it's all very preset and very legal, it is a useful and very functional piece of software. There are probably a couple of features that I've missed off there that I just haven't touched on or haven't used or whatever that might be, might be great. Sorry if I haven't mentioned those, but um, hopefully that gives you an idea of what the software is about. So a quick look at the business radio customer programming software otherwise known as cps from motorola thank you for watching and uh, any comments or questions you have do let me know and i will catch you soon bye bye